Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are talking about Color Warper. It is a relatively new tool that was introduced from DaVinci Resolve 17, if I'm not mistaken, and it is a pretty powerful, inconvenient tool. First of all, when you look at it, you just a little bit confused because this looks like a spider web, which is put on top of the arrays of the colors. And this is actually how it looks. We have the color wheel behind, not really a color wheel, but color spectrum going like color wheel from one uh, color to the other. And on top of it, we have a spider web. On this spider web, we have several points. Each point can be controlled in order to change hue and saturation. This one is called color warper, hue and saturation. So if you want to change any particular color, to a different one, you just click any point in here and you want to just drag it to a certain direction to which color you want to change this particular color that you have in here. But it is difficult to guess which color is which when you're looking at your image. So an easier way is to just use your color picker. And when you are moving through your scene, you can see that these like orange rectangle is going to go from one point to the other and it's going to show you which color which hue you are going to select and which level of saturation it actually is so if i left click in here and just drag it to the left to bottom to top to left to right to any direction i'm changing the cues of a color that i selected within my scene if I wanted a really precise way to change that color and saturation as well, and as well as luminance, actually, I would just click it in here. This way I'm selecting a particular point in my scene. And now I'm going to the right bottom corner and I have hue control in here. Right next to it, I've got the saturation slider and right next to it, luminance slider. This way I can precisely control any particular color in my scene. You can actually increase the resolution of this spider wrap. This is done in order to control something that is very specific. You want to control some a very specific portion, a very specific hue of the color. This particular resolution, which is 6x6, six six, is perfect to make big adjustments of the colors and it is perfect for 8-bit footage but if you have something like 10 or even 12-bit footage and you want to specifically control a portion of your hue you want to change the resolution to something bigger like 24 to 16 and this way if i'm selecting something in here i select this particular point and when i drag it it's not going to be noticeable in here because this wall is like one color but when you try to adjust something like within this computer with within this fan color you can see that it introduces some artifacts because there are numerous hues in here and i'm selected only one of them let's return to resolution six by six also you can see that some of these dots are different these dots are white which means that they are not selected when I'm selecting a dot, it turns into an orange one. And we also have dots that are white in the center and black, uh, with black circle surrounding it. These dots are stationary ones. It means when I'm selecting a certain dot and trying to move it to left, to right, to any direction, I'm stretching all of the other points with it, but these circles with these black surroundings, they remain at their position. You can actually create a point like that, and this leads us to tools. The first tool is just a selection tool. You can select a number of points, or you can select one particular point. If you want to deselect it, just right-click, and the point is going to be deselected. Another tool is called Draw Selection. You just left-click and draw it on top of the points that you want to select and they are going to be selected now the third tool is called pin de pin you can click any point to create a stationary point this way if you are dragging the point neighbor into it it's not going to move with it this way allows you for finer control of your colors you can turn any point in a stationary one using this tool just by left clicking any point left click 
second time and it's going to go to revert this selection to the selected now the next tool is called pull points this is a really strange thing at first when you just press anywhere it is going to pull the neighboring points within this sector and it is used to reduce the saturation within this certain color if you want to reduce the saturation in like blues and pinks you just press it in here it's going to pull those points together reducing the saturation if you want to increase the saturation within the certain color you need to use this particular tool which is called push points and you can increase the saturation within a certain color just by clicking numerous times to push those points apart now below these main tools we have number of like secondary tools if you wish so let's talk about them if you select a point and then click this one this is going to select neighboring points and the more you click the more points is going to be selected next to this control is decrease fall off by clicking this point you are going to deselect neighboring points so the one this one is increasing the area of point selection and this one is decreasing this one is going to select everything that is deselected right now and deselect everything that is selected it's called invert selection which is pretty straightforward this one is going to convert an uh, original point to a pin to a stationary point but it is called uh, convert selected to pin it means it is not going to convert pin to selected for this you need to select this tool and click on the point to deselect the stationary point select pin column if you've selected a certain point you, you can select this particular control in order to select the whole column this one the next to it is going to select a circle of points the next one is going to select the whole web and this one is going to reset selection this means that if you moved this particular point for example to any uh, location you just click this and it's going to reset this point to its original position now you can select points uh, by just dragging a wrench on this uh, like color spectrum for example i want to select within my scene which is kind of logical it's go i'm going to select something like from orange to yellow right and it's going to select a line which is responsible for this particular color and then i can drag this line changing my hue and saturation to a new value now we also have auto lock auto lock is going to lock automatically some of the points and what points it is going to lock you are determined in here for example i'm selecting a particular point in here and there only only this point is being selected and two neighboring points are now locked this this way i can control my hue and saturation very very precisely i've selected here auto lock two points and this means that i've selected a point and also two points with it are going to be moved but the rest are going to remain stationary mm, if you know what you're doing this is a pretty useful tool now well, let's talk about these controls we already talked about them just a little bit but we have some controls that we have not touched as an example i'm going to select this point and change hue saturation and luminance values first of all we have this smooth hue when you click on it the point is going to move closer to its original position and the more I, the more i click on it the more this point is going to move to its original position until it reaches the original position the same thing goes for the saturation the more i click it the more it's going to move to its original position if i want to reset it completely i would just click reset hue reset saturation and we also have a reset button for luminance resetting luminance 
This is the color warper, but it is not the only color warper that is in here. If you click this neighboring uh, symbol, it is called chroma versus luminance. And this is a whole different thing because this is also a color warper, but a different one. This one allows you to change chroma and luma. And this one you are going to use when you want to change the luminance of a certain color or to change a certain color that is connected to a certain level of luminance. Let me demonstrate. First of all, you need to select which grid you are going to use. It is either going from yellow to like bluish one or going from teal, greenish teal to... or just greenish. Yeah, or a range that is going from greenish to like pinkish one. You can select a grid in here and then select in a point. Dragging from left to right is going to change the chroma of the thing that I selected. Dragging it up and down is going to change the luminance. All of the controls that we discussed before, they are applicable in here as well. Select a point, change chroma, change luma. The controls are identical, but here they are a little bit different because auto lock allows us to determine what we are going to lock. Uh, we are going to lock horizontal dots that ally within this the same horizon as the dot that we are selecting. Or we are going to select locking vertical lines. Or we can select that we are going to lock uh, surrounding points means that the only point that is going to be moving is the one that we have selected. The other controls are absolutely identical to the color warper hue and saturation. The only difference is that you need to get used to a little bit different look and it allows you to control chroma and luma. You do not really need to get used to it because you can just click within your scene and change everything you want in here. If you change it to grid 2, it is going to go to different uh, chroma, to different hues. This way Color Warper allows you to change uh, saturation, hue, chroma and luma within your scene and to control it really, really precisely. This is probably everything I wanted to say about the Color Warper and in the next lesson we are going to talk about qualifiers. Thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.